So a couple of days ago, Goodreads told me that I reached the 100 books read so far this year mark. So I thought I was going to do the top 10 and then I realized I actually have a top 5 that I love with all my heart and then I have some honorable mentions. So we are going to go first for the honorable mentions and then we're going to go on to the top 5 books that you need to read this year because they're amazing. Before I start with the honorable mentions, uh, hi, my name is Laura. Welcome, welcome back to my channel. The first honorable I'll mention I have for you is a fantasy book set on China on 1345 so it's kind of historical fiction the fantasy is very on the background I think it's going to be more important on the second book at least I hope so and the second book is actually released today so yesterday for you. This means that it's a really good moment to start reading the first book in the series, which is She Who Becomes the Sun. So this book is extremely character driving. It's about a girl. She kind of reminds me of Ring in the Poppy War. This kind of extremely ambitious heroine that will do absolutely anything she needs to achieve what she wants. And what she wants is being great because she lives in this extremely poor village where there aren't any girls left because people would rather feed their sons than their daughters, which means she's only alive because she's extremely good at getting her own food. She's a very resourceful little girl. So when she's there, they go to this person who tell them that her brother is going to be great because there is something on his blood that is destined for greatness. And they told her that she is worth for nothing. The thing is that her brother dies. So she decides to steal her, his identity to kind of trick the gods into believing that her brother is still alive so she can achieve the greatness instead of him. I think that says a lot more about her than I can possibly say with adjectives. At some point during the middle of the book you start following another POV that is Ojan's POV. Ojan's POV is pain. That's why this book is compared sometimes with The Song of Achilles is because Ojan is this servant guy who is an eunuch and he is gay and he is in love with his best friend which is also the person he has to betray to take revenge on the death of all his family so everything about this character is very painful to read if you like that highly recommend this book and i hope book two gives some peace of mind to ojan then i have four honorable mentions for romance the first one is going to be a sapphic romance it's called those who wait it's extremely slow paced book it's over 600 pages between two girls who meet on a dating app but one of them wants to do something casual while the other is really into very commitment relationships so they decided to be friends instead even though they are both really attracted to each other. Then I have three gay romance books. The first one is Seven of Space. This is a thriller romance book that has probably the most, well, the second highest average rating I've ever given to a thriller romance series. But I was a bit disappointed because I didn't love the ending of the series. So basically you're following a serial killer mystery throughout the five books of the series and then there are smaller mysteries in each book of the series. And you're following Levi and Dominic. At the beginning Levi has a boyfriend but you see they are not really made for each other and you have Dominic who is the typical person who flits with absolutely everyone has kind of a crush on Levi because it's Levi and they are completely different because Levi is very serious and cold whereas Dominic is very sunshine and just loves talking with people and I love that dynamic so much and well they will have to be working together and things are going to happen. I would recommend this if you like thriller romances but you need the romance to be there from the beginning because the first book is a slow burn but for a lot of thriller romances there is slow burn through all this series. And I have the two spicy books. I'm going to be doing a video about the spicy books. I adore them so much. The first one is for the fans. This is extremely long, over 700 pages. But if you don't mind long books, I'm someone who loves long books if they are done currently because it's more pages to follow the characters you have fallen in love with. And this is between two stepbrothers. They don't really get along basically because one of them, he run. He's such a spoiled brat, but at the same time, he's a really unreliable character to follow because he's not exactly as you think he is at the beginning so they are going to be bickering all the time and they will go from high school to college and in college they will need some money and to get that money since one of their friends he does like only fans she kind of convinces them to do like a threesome with her for 
her OnlyFans account and people love them together. It's not going to be an MMF romance, it's a gay romance pick. That's the only scene you're going to have with a woman. From that on, the smut is going to be amazing. Like, it's going to take some time to get there, but once you get there, best of smut I've read so far, at least a smut that is not fanfiction. We know that fanfiction is just another level. The final one is less to this that has a trope I actually don't like most of the time that is that you have a smut from the very very beginning. In this case I didn't care because I connected with the characters so much. It's a bit that is extremely sweet like you're seeing them in love and you're feeling that love on your heart and also the smut is extremely good. The thing is that you don't really have anything else going on so if you rather have action or a very fast paced story maybe don't pick this up because it's almost 400 pages of them trying to figure it out how to make things work because they are best friends and they have never been with a man before and basically one of them is in love with the other and the other at the beginning thinks he's not attracted to men but in the first chapter a toy arrives he is the one who gets the toy instead of his best friend so when he is going to give the toy to his best friend he realizes actually imagining my best friend with this toy is kind of hot and things happen. Then on to my top five books out of the 100 one I've read so far this year. First one is the fantasy book. It's not going to be a surprise if you have been following my videos before their hand by you ever come be. This book made me realize how right I was about giving the series a second try because I had read The Blade itself and I really like it, the characterization, but the plot didn't really make me want to keep reading. So I was a bit afraid that this book was going to be the same way. But no, here the action was so damn good, guys. And also the characterization are, of course, still amazing. Logan is my favorite character to follow so far this year. To be honest, I ended up falling in love with all of the characters here, at least the, I was going to say the good ones, but they are not really good. Then I have the two that main novels, the first one is going to be Grandmaster of Demonic Cultivation. Look, this series is the love of my life. I first watched the Don Hua, cried my eyes out and now I'm reading the books. I still haven't finished book four because I'm not ready. I'm not ready to finish this book, guys. I'm kind of, you know when you love a series so much that you don't want to read it yet? You're kind of reserving it for when you are having a really bad moment in life or maybe nothing is working for you and you know you have that book on your shelf that you're going to give five stars to. And it's like, this is the moment for you to make my life feel like it's worth living. That's what book four and five are going to be for me. So for those who don't know, this book is a fantasy romance Chinese novel. It's called Dan Mei, Jiangxia, something like that. It follows a very tragic love story between Lang Wanji and Wei Guixian. Wei Guixian, you see him, he's a typical travel mocker, and Wang Wanji is a typical who follows absolutely all the rules, but they are going to be really good for each other, they really enjoy the company of the other, they don't really know why at the beginning. Something happens and Wei Wishan dies and at the beginning of the book you see Wei Wishan coming back in another body a lot of years after that thing that happened. So you're slowly getting to know the characters in the present while figuring out what happened with them in the past. If you like characters that are so bad at talking with the crush that they crush things they actually hate them. Lang Wanji is going to be your next favorite character. And Wei Wuxiang is such a funny character. If you like that character who is so good at flirting and is so clever that he always figures out how to get what he wants, kind of dodging the rules a bit, uh, you're going to have so much fun with this book. It's very tragic, but it also has a lot of humor in it. Also, the fanfics of this series, I read more fanfics during the beginning of this year than actual books. I then have one of the only five stars this year so far that is 
the Huskia is quite catchy soon. Okay, so first, trigger warnings for uh, suicide. So if you are not okay with that, go to the next book. So in the first chapter, he's 32. He has reached everything he thought he wanted to reach in life. He's an emperor. Everyone who had betrayed him had died and everyone he loved had died too. So he takes some poison and he dies. And in the second chapter, instead of dying, he goes back to the past. So now he's on his team body but his mind is a 32 year old mind so he will realize that there are certain things that when he was a teenager he didn't realize and now that he has a different mindset he's able to see especially around his Chism. I think this book was writing us how many punches can I give the reader in just one chapter so painful. It has a bit of humor, so it's not all tragic, and I thought the balance was perfection. That being said, check the trigger warnings because I still don't know why I love this book so much, because I usually don't read this kind of very unhinged romance book that have a trigger warning list bigger than the amount of pages of the book, but I'm not alone with this. A lot of people absolutely adore this series, so if you don't mind following a great character and you want to have your heart broken a bit, check this out. Then I have another surprise for me and it's a thriller romance series called The Adrian English Mystery Series. This series, I started reading it just because of Adrian English. He's the kind of POV you love following because he's so funny. The mysteries are really, really good, but the romance is going to take a while to get there. And not only is going to take a while, but the love interest is homophobic. Yeah, the first three books were pain, really annoying, really frustrating. I only keep reading because of Adrian, because I was so freaking tired of the love interest, Jake. But once you get to the fourth book and the fifth book and the sixth book slash novella, you are going to love them so much. It's going to be so satisfying, so rewarding. I feel like a Malasan fan right now telling you just the first book are kind of frustrating and hard to read, but it's going to be so worth it at the end. So yeah, editing English mystery series, same feeling, exactly same feeling. If you don't mind waiting to be rewarded, highly recommend this. And then, no surprise here, we have to see him alone. I made a video with my top 10 favorite gay romance books of all time. I've read over 250 gay romance books and this is my favorite. I still don't understand how this book is so amazing. I know it's not a book for absolutely everyone. You have to like slow paced books. You have to don't mind that the writing is not very generic and simple. It's a bit lyric. But if you are able to connect with the writing, here are some statistics. I have 13 friends who reviewed this book, 10 of them gave it 5 stars. The other 3 said that draw out a bit too much, that it was too slow, but we're talking about 10 5 stars out of 13. That's insane. So after this very long introduction about how amazing this book are and how clever of you will be adding it to your TBR, I will tell you what the story is about. So it's between two surfers, James, who wants to be professional, and Danny, who is the best surfer in the entire world, and did meet in this championship in California in 1976, where they have to compete against each other. The thing is that James wasn't counting on Sydney traveling all the way from Hawaii to this championship, so now the odds of him becoming professional are next to zero, because he will have to beat the best surfer in the entire world to go professional. I'm not going to say what happens there, but the thing is that they are going to collide and they are going to instantly be attracted to each other, but it's just attraction because they start colliding with war. And I loved it. I was reading the dialogues, I was reading the POVs, and I just felt like I was reading a memoir and not a historical fiction. They just feel like real human beings. I don't know how the author did it, but such a great job. Best gay romance I've read in my entire life. Highly, highly recommend it. So that's it for the video. You can like, you can subscribe, you can let me know in the comments which was your favorite book or book so far this year because, I mean, there are some books that just hit so different but they are so hard to find. At least for me, I feel like I'm so picky with five star books but when you find them, you know that they are the ones. So yeah, thank you so much for watching and I'll see you soon in another video.